All right, the second animation exercise will build on what we learned with easing in and easing out, but this time adding the new principle of squashing and stretching to your animation. So let's open up animation exercise two. And as with the other one, you can open up your scene and you can see that there's four different scenes. Each one's gonna have its own unique challenges, but we'll start off with the basic bounce. Also like the other one, we've got our ball that's on the ground, and in this case, I'm giving you some guidelines, but these guidelines are only gonna show you where I want the ball to be at certain keyframes, rather than every single keyframe. So for this one, it's mimicking the arc of a natural ball being bounced, uh, in that it gets a little bit higher, and then loses momentum and loses uh, the, the velocity as it moves to the right as it loses energy. So by frame 15 it should be here and then 10 frames later here and then 8 frames later here and 4 right here. So, <coughs> excuse me, to start this off I'm going to give myself a few more frames than is necessary on my timeline. I know I need at least 36 so I'm going to choose 45. Selecting all of these layers, the 45th frame, we'll hit 5 will give us just a blank regular frame in there. You can also go to f insert timeline and all we inserted was a regular frame for that. Next, let's go through and actually animate our ball where it needs to be along the path. So I'm in the ball layer. I know on frame 15, so I selected frame 15. I can hit six and insert a regular keyframe, then move the ball to position 15. Then go to our keyframe timeline down here and make a keyframe at 25. Then move the ball to position 25. Then make a keyframe at 32. Hit six and move the ball to 32. And then finally resting at 36, make a keyframe there and then move it to 36. That's kind of the pace and pattern to keep up. Make a keyframe first, then move your object. Don't get into a habit of accidentally moving it first, then making your keyframe. I'm also gonna choose my regular move tool so I can see it. So the pace, if I was to play this, would look like this, there, 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 and there, as it moves along. Now let's take this one arch at a time, and I'll show you how to think about each one. Between frames one and 15, if this ball was arcing, the midpoint is where it should be on my timeline as well. So if I look at my timeline, between 1 and 15 is roughly frame number 8. So this frame, I'll create a keyframe here, hitting 6. The ball should be moved right here. So by frame number 8, it's up here, and frame 15, it's fallen back down. Frame 1, 8, and then 15. What I need to do is to now animate each of the frames in between those two keyframes. And so these are my in-between frames. So if I've got frame one here and frame eight here, and I know it's moving up, I want it to move fast at the beginning and it's gonna ease in. It's gonna slow down and have more keyframes as it reaches the apex and then it's going to ease out, slowly moving and then picking up momentum as it moves down to frame 15. Here's what it would look like on my timeline. So I'm going to choose frame 1, hit the new keyframe, in this case it's number 6, and I'm going to move it up a pretty good distance, and you can kind of get an idea based on the shadow of where I'm moving it, so there's that. And then I'm going to hit a new keyframe, 6, I'm going to move it up, but not as much as the last one. Then hit it again, and move it up a little bit less, following my curve, then hit again. And I'm paying attention to how many frames I've got left. I've got one, two, three keyframes to move up before it hits that eighth frame. So here's one, a little bit less, two, and then finally three before it hits the eighth right there. Now if I want to see what this looks like, there's an option called onion skinning, which will show me all of the frames 
uh, in one solid movement. If you look at the very bottom of your timeline, next to your loop button is the onion skin button. By the way, the keyboard shortcut is Option Shift Zero. Onion skinning will give you a little uh, uh, handles before and after your your um, playhead. And if you click on the handles, you can drag it back in time or even forward in time, and it will show you what the frames look like as you approach and move away from them. So here, all the way back to my first frame, you can see how much I'm moving it. And so if I need to, I can actually go back in time and readjust the position of these so that it uh, moves a little bit more naturally. Perhaps I can go back to this third frame and move it up a little bit more. And in the fourth frame, I'll move it up and in a little bit more as well. So now when I move up to here, it gives it a lot more natural movement. So let's move the downward movement, animate that. So I've got keyframe eight selected, hit, uh -oh. <coughs> excuse me, hit six, I'm on frame nine, I'm gonna move it just slightly, and then 10, move it slightly, but a little bit more, and then 11, a little bit more, 12, starting to pick up momentum, 13, a lot more momentum, and then 14, right about there. For finally 15, it slams into it right there. And if I wanted to test this, I can turn on my looping. We'll set my loop to keyframes 1 and 15. And you can see it's moving fast, but it is easing up and easing down. We're going to repeat this process between frames 15 and 25, and then later 25, 30, and 32 and 36 all the way to the end. You can watch me do it, um, but I'm going to speed through this. The process is exactly the same. Start off by determining the center point. In this case, between 15 and 25, it's going to be roughly frame 20. Create my keyframe, move it to the center point, and then move back to its starting position and animate the ball frame by frame, easing up and then easing down over to this one. So I'll, I'll speed through and let you watch me work on this. All right, and so now you see I've reached the very end of it right here. We'll turn off onion skinning. Let's turn on looping and see what this looks like. So it goes up and down. Pretty good. It's looking like it loses momentum and it does a great job of moving up and then going back down. And you can play around with the physics of it to have it more hang time, give it more time easing in or more time easing out. But this is the basic concept, moving quickly as it moves up, but it's slowing down as it pulls against gravity and eventually falls back. So once this one's done, let's choose scene number two, which adds some squash and stretch to our layout. We're going to start off this first one. <clears throat> I want you to add and create your own bounce of a ball. For this one, I'm not giving you the arc to follow. I'm going to let you choose and make your own arc. Instead, I'm telling you where it should be at each keyframe. So by frame 20, it should be here. 10 frames later at 30, it should be here. Then 38 and 43. So the setup to this will be the, exactly the same as the previous one. Let's give ourselves a few more frames than is necessary. I need at least 43. I'm going to choose the 50 mark, hit 5 to create just some regular frames, and then let's move the ball into position for 20, 30, 38, and 34. So ball layer, there's number 20, hit 6, move the ball into position, 30, keyframe, move the ball into position, 35, keyframe, move the ball into position. Excuse me, that should be 38. It should be there. If you do make a mistake, I'm going to click and just drag that 
over to 38 right there. And then finally, 43 keyframe. Let's move that to 38. All right, with that established, let's go back and take it one arc at a time. Between frames 1 and 20, well, the halfway point is going to be frame number 10. Create a keyframe. And if I'm animating this, the ball will go up. And we'll say this will be our apex. So there it is at 10 up there. So here to here, and then back down to here. I can turn on onion skinning, and let's see what the animation will look like. So I've got my onion skin turned on. Frame 1 selected. <clears throat> There's 2. We'll let it go up. Say we've got a good number of frames to go, so I'm going to let it go pretty, pretty fast. 1. Here's 2. 3. 4. 5. 6. Pull out my onion skin so I know what I'm looking at. There we go. There's 7. 8. 9. And then 10. Go back to 9 and maybe move that over just a little bit. Right there. So once I'm at 10, I've got 10 frames to let it fall back to number 20. So I need to be there in 10 frames. So here's 11. We'll move it a little bit. So let's nudge it down. I'll just nudge it out of the way. Here's 12, 13, 14, picking up some speed, 15, 16, a little bit more, 17, 18, a whole lot more, 19, almost at the end, before it hits 20. So let's look what that looks like on loop mode. Turn on loop, frames 1 through 20. Pretty good. Lots of air time as it falls back down. Repeat that process. I'm going to speed through in the video and uh, do that for the next couple of bounces that are on here. All right, and so now I've reached the end of 43, and maybe I'll add a few more little frames here to uh, have the ball roll. So there's 44, 45, 46, and all it's doing is rolling along a little bit. Let's turn on our loop and see what it looks like. All the way to the end, boom, 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 boom. So now you can see it's actually following a really cool set of physics. Got a lot of air time on that first one and a good bounce for 20 and 38 and 43. Okay, so here's the second principle that we'll work through. Adding squash and stretch. Whenever a ball strikes the ground, it's like it's smacking into it and it want, we want to be able to squash it against whatever surface it's striking. So every time it strikes 20, 30, and 38, the ball should be distorted just slightly. It should squash together as it, uh, as it uh, hits the surface that it's going into. Now when it reaches 43, there's not a lot of momentum left, and so it's not going to distort it as much. So the first distortion, because it's falling so far, by the time it reaches 20, boom. It's got the most momentum that's striking it, and so it should have the most squash to it. So let's choose frame number 20. And with that frame selected, I'm going to turn on my free transform tool that gives me the little bounding box around this one. And with this bounding box, I can distort the object I have selected. Now if I just click the top handle and drag down, you can see by default it's wanting to keep it symmetrical. And that's not really what I want to do. I just want to drag the top downward and not have it uh, pull the bottom up. So to hold down the Option key, when I click and drag, 
will allow me to pull the top down to the bottom and we'll give it the most distortion. Let's have it stretched almost as flat as a pancake. Now when you do this, another thing to do is I'm also going to pull out the edges just a little bit because we want it to have the same amount of volume. So as it squashes down, it actually expands out by just a little bit. And then the next one, let's go to frame 30. And in this one, it's going to squash, but because there's not as much momentum coming down, it won't go all the way to the ground. So maybe squash a little bit like that. And maybe we'll pull out the edges just slightly. Then finally by frame 38, right there, it'll barely squash just a little bit. And then certainly by 43, you won't notice it at all. Now let's play it again and watch for the squash as it comes down to here. So boom, 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 boom. Pretty cool. Now it looks like the ball actually has a little bit of give to its structure. It's not just a rigid ball, but it's actually a bouncy, squishy ball. As we do with the same thing, so let's go back to number 20. We want to animate that squash as it's coming out of being squashed. So let's go to frame 21. By 21, it should be a little bit squashed but it's coming out of it. So maybe I'm gonna pull this down, hold the option and pull it down a little bit more. Same way for 30. There's 30, 31, should be a little less squashed. I'm gonna pull that one down. And then 38, I'm not even gonna worry about that. So let's play that along. Boom, 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 boom. Pretty good, going along well for this one. Now. The next thing we want it to do is to add a little bit of stretch to what we have. Just as it's going to be squashed when it uh, reaches this end, as it falls, we want our object to be stretching out, almost like gravity is pulling towards it. So as I scrub over, it's going to, let's reach this first part. Oh, come on, there we go. Reaches up, and as it falls, I don't want it to stay rounded. I want it to stretch out and reach towards the area it's about to strike just before it squashes and goes back down again. And so when it goes down, boom, boom, boom. And so at the top, there's this up here. It's gonna go up and then right about here, let's let it start to stretch. And so at most stretch would be right here. So I'm actually gonna work backwards. I've got frame 20, here's frame 19. I'm going to hold down Option and click and drag this down. And actually, if I hold down my Command key, I can stretch it toward where I want it to be. So let's stretch it just like that. So notice it's stretching out right here. So there's that bit. Let's go back to frame 18 and we'll give it a little less stretch. This is where your onion skinning may come in handy. You can see how much it's stretched there. Holding down Command, I'm gonna stretch it out, not as much. And then back up to 17, and stretch it out just a little bit. And then 16, stretch it out just barely. And then as it picks up momentum, it's barely stretched from here. Boom. Pretty good, let's go back up into this one. So next one would be frames 30. Onion skinning's kind of getting in the way. So I've got frame 30 is where it's stretched. Let's back up, I'm hitting the greater, excuse me, less than symbol. So there's frame 29. Hold down the command key this time. We're gonna stretch it just a little bit. Most stretch there. This is where turning on onion skinning may actually help, but instead of looking ahead so much, there's that one. Let's go back to frame 28. Click and drag, not as much. And finally frame 27, and there's that one. Zoom. And then let's go to frame 38. 38. Then we'll back up to frame 37. Make sure that frame is selected. Not gonna have a lot of stretch to it, but it should have some. 
maybe frame 36 has almost none at all. Just a little bit right there. So as it goes up, zoom, zoom, do, do, do. And if you want, you can also add some stretch as it bounces back up. So here's frame, let's see if we can add some of this to, uh, to frame one. So frame one starts off here. Frame two should be stretched out. So I'm gonna hold down Command. We'll have it stretch up. And frame three stretches up even more, but it's gonna become circular as it loses momentum. Frame five, a little bit. Frame six, a little less. Then it goes up and down, 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 down. And up and down. So repeat this process for each one. We want to add a little bit of stretching as it goes up and then stretching as it goes down into a squash and then stretching as it goes up and stretching as it goes down into a squash and then stretching up and down as it goes into this one as well. So let's go back to here. Here's frame 20, 21, we're going to stretch it, 22, stretch it just a little bit more, 23, not as much stretch, finally no stretch at all. So let's go back and we'll loop it over the entire thing. Boom, boom, boom. And now it looks like my ball is alive and it's got some some tactile nature to it. It's being able to be squishy, stretch, and bend. Now this would all change based on the properties of the ball. If you've got a more rigid ball like a bowling ball, of course it won't stretch as much, but it also won't bounce as high or as long versus if I've got like a tennis ball or a super stretchy bouncy ball, it'll stretch a lot and bounce higher because it's got a lot more minimum and a lot more stored up potential energy. And that's where scene three comes in, different weight balls. For this one, I've got a light ball, that's the little one. I've got a medium normal weight ball, and then I've got a heavy ball that I want you to animate. Show me what it would look like if the light ball was to bounce. It would bounce a lot more often and go higher as it bounces. The normal ball would, wouldn't go as high and maybe not have as many bounces. And the heavier ball would bounce just maybe a few times and then stop altogether. I'm going to leave it up to you how you want this one to bounce, but use the same principles. The squashing and stretching for this lightweight ball should be a lot more prominent. The squashing and stretching for the normal ball should be a little less prominent. And the squashing and stretching for the, uh, the heavier ball should be almost non-existent. All right, and the final one for this exercise is what I call Ball Alive. With this one, I want you to pretend like this little ball needs to be able to jump over this hurdle and into the right-hand side of the screen. And so I've got the Hero Ball selected. It's up to you to determine how he starts off gaining momentum, then finally jumping into the center part and then over into the right hand side. So with this, you might want to play around with the timing and also the uh, the amplitude, but he's going to start off right here, let's choose my move tool, 
and he'll start off slowly, building up momentum, getting higher and higher until finally he jumps and then lands and then maybe does one or two bounces and then lands over here. Now for this one, you don't have to necessarily plan out every single jump and where it should go. You can take this one frame at a time as long as you keep in mind the, uh, the principles that we've learned, the principles of easing in and out and squashing and stretching. I recommend doing the animation first, then going back in and adding in the squash and stretch later on. So I will show you how I would build mine out as if I was to create it. I'm going to do it one frame at a time. So I don't even know how long it's going to take. I'm just going to do it frame by frame. But my hero ball will start off. Here's my frame two. And then maybe he uh, frame three gets a little bit higher and then goes down by frame four, frame five. He goes up and gets a little higher and then goes down. And then frame six goes up. there and goes down and so if I wanted to test that all I did was I just created frames and I slowly moved it over and over again so we'll bring our looping up slowly gathering frames so there's that one and then maybe this one he goes a little bit higher and higher then slows down, and then eases back into it. Then here, and finally this is the big one. He goes up, then over, and then eases back down to here. Let's test that out. Boom, 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 up to there. Pretty good. And then goes down, and then he bounces up and eases into this landing. Then there, and maybe this will be a big one jump. Eases up into here, and slowly back down here and finally one last one he jumps up and down and he quickly falls back to this portion right at the ground and maybe he bounces a little bit more before finally coming to a rest and you can see all I did was I hit the six key over and over again and as I play it oh, let's bring up our loop boom boom bounce 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 down there now it is a little bit choppy, so I'll go through and right, right here, maybe I can clean up the bounce of it. And then the last thing I'll do is I'll add the squashing and stretching effects to when it strikes the ground and when it bounces back up. I'll leave it up to you how you want yours to be animated, but make it look natural. Make it look like something that would actually be created as if he was bouncing over the area. Once this is done, you can also save this as a regular flash file and upload this one along with exercise one to the Moodle page.